I give and they get Then they run around town beating their chest like they forget Whoa. I can forget for now, but I will never forget No Love I feel, knowing the universe got my back Whoa. Love I feel, knowing that money gonna come right back Is it Malcolm X? <laughs> Hey, Mal- Malcolm not Malcolm X, X. Malcolm Professor X. X. <laughs> I was gonna say Malcolm X. <laughs> You're like that won't. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, both yeah, don't yeah, work. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Professor Charles Xavier. I was, gonna, I was gonna go with it too. Like yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Malcolm X. <laughs> Jesus. That's on camera. That's funny. Yeah, it is. We'll, we'll start the pot with that. Yeah. Right. All right. What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to the Journey Podcast. If you are here, please subscribe, like, drop a comment. Most of our viewers are on Spotify, so please leave us a five-star rating there. Apple Podcasts, do the thing. Joined by Cousin Jake. What up? And uh, we have a returning guest. If you've been here since the jump about three years ago, episode eight, uh, formerly known as Nikki BTV, the bailiff from Divorce Court, Alan Mm. from The Oval, and now the host of the Here's to Life podcast, Nick Barada, appreciate wow. you coming on. I like that, man. You covered all the all the ground there. That's good. good, huh? There That's we go. great. That's this good. guy. Thank God I got him, bro. I couldn't do that shit, man, bro. That was good. I like that. <laughs> okay. See, I got to take notes while I'm here because you guys kill this thing. Let me tell you. You know I'm taking notes all the time watching you guys' episodes. There we go. So I'm taking notes this whole time. I yeah. got you. Yeah, the only note that you're going to get from us is have absolutely no fucking plan and hope for the best, bro. <laughs> hey, it that's works out. Sometimes best. that's the best plan. Yeah, that's the best plan. 100%. Damn, episode eight, though. That's crazy. What yeah, you, episode? Now, this is episode what? 113. 113. Damn. Man. It would have been cool if it was 108. Yeah. Yeah, it would have no, been 100. Guys, man, that's crazy. You guys yeah. have been doing your thing. Consistency, man. I love it. I 100%. tell you off camera all the time, man. You guys uh, you guys are awesome at what you do. And, and and the way you guys roll these episodes out and, and how you roll them out mm-hmm. and the level of how you do this thing is great. And that's why I'm, uh, that's why I'm really here because, man, I'm trying to just be a sponge. You guys, you guys got it. You guys got it down. That's for sure. Appreciate Let's go, baby. It. Yeah. Yep. Let's go, baby. Yeah, no, and you're doing your thing, obviously, with the pod. Five episodes in. Yeah, man. It's crushing, yeah. off the rip, yep. huge guests. Um, and it's cool. I mean, and we can kind of just start with that. You were kind of doing this shit before anyone else. It's crazy. See? You're <laughs> right, man. You're right. You really were doing <laughs> right. this shit with, yeah. the, with the camera and the interviewing before anyone else with Nikki BTV. Yeah, before podcasts were really a thing. I, I, I always wanted to be like Ryan Seacrest. I remember like... Even when I went into one of my first classes at Hofstra University, uh, for, I was a broadcast journalism major. Uh, I was late. I walked into class late, and the teacher, professor, kind of put me on the spot. And I literally said, I'm here because I want to be the next Ryan Seacrest. <laughs> I said that to, to the professor, <laughs> okay. like, first day of class. Okay. And the class laughed or whatever, but, like, you could tell, like, they knew I was serious. Mm-hmm. That was a dream of mine, man. I always just love to watch, you know, the hosts do their thing, the Ryan Seacrest, the Mario Lopez, Jason Kennedy on E! News. Uh, that's what I wanted to do. That's what I wanted to do. Um, and uh, so I said, why not? Nikki BTV was, you know, I was building a network and I had some I had some cool connects kind of on the event side of things that were giving me the press passes and I was just taking full advantage, man. So I, I just said, why not? Let's go for it. And I had some great interviews, man, and, and yeah. created a little website. And we, we, we did it for a little while, and it was fun. And, and it definitely catapulted me into sort of that next phase of my career, you know. But um, it's funny. Now we're kind of circling back and, and picking things up. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah, I want, I want to re- rewind. I've been fascinated a little bit lately with, like, what makes a person a person. Mm. Because... Um, some people would say that you are who you are because of your life experience, uh, which is pretty crazy to think about because if you you don't go through those things and you don't become that person, Mm. how did you become this like outgoing charismatic guy? Because when you really think about it, you're not just outgoing charismatic. You took that to like a professional level. That's how like you're like the most outgoing charismatic. So how how did you get there? I appreciate that. I mean, uh, yeah, I don't know if there's just a, a one true answer to that question. I mean, obviously, I think just it's part of my personality. I kind of was always the class clown or I always wanted to run around and make people laugh or kind of entertain people. I think that just kind of came naturally. I mean, my mom and dad will tell you stories about me, you know, at, at family parties and just trying to steal the mic from the DJ and, you know, right. lead the, the conga line, whatever it was. That It was me. Right. Mm-hmm. Um and uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I think uh, I was I was never really great on paper. I think it was also just kind of a way for me to, uh, you know, uh, kind of show a strong point, a strong suit of mine, I guess, being my personality and mm-hmm. kind of that that 
you know, outgoing um, uh, quality. But yeah, man, I think, you know, as the years went on and I got more secure too, because I think, you know, maybe when I was younger, uh, there were times when I was that it kind of making up for some insecurities maybe, yeah. right? I always, I, you know, you try and think back and like, man, why did I do that? Why did I do that? Think right. in a certain situations. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But um, it, it's definitely, my, and I say this humbly, but I think, you know, my, my personality and my, my um, ability to just kind of go up and spark a conversation with anybody or kind of just walk into a room and demand that, uh, attention mm. in a way. Mm -hmm. And I say that, I say that humbly, right. Uh, was, is one of my biggest kind of flexes, you know? Yeah. Um, cause I, like I said, I was never good on paper. You know, when people asked for my resume, I was like, let's meet in person, mm. you know, let me get yeah. in front of you. A hundred percent. Yeah. 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 I, I was like, no, nah, I'll hand you the resume in person though. And let, let's sit down for a minute. Right. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. You know, I guess I got to thank mom and dad a little bit. Grandma right. for sure. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. They, they, I guess the trickle down a little bit, the personality, but, but I'm, I'm, I'm very, uh, um, humble and obviously thankful in a way that, that that's just a part of the DNA, I guess. Yeah. I Let's know. go. Yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. Go. I want to, and then, so started there, right? Nikki B TV and you started, like you told us uh, numerous, you know, amounts of stories of like how you'd create media passes yeah. and, and get into these events and, <laughs> and, and get cool with the, you know, the, the door guy at the hotel. So yeah. then when you were trying to get in, you know, you'd whatever, yeah. um, it just seemed like you were always hustling, always finding a way and like not taking no for an answer. Yeah. So talk, I want you to talk about some of those, those nights and those stories say in like in LA where maybe you didn't belong yeah. or maybe it was in New York or in yeah. LA or wherever yeah. where like you probably shouldn't have been there and you found a way and then you ma made these connections and yeah. i mean like ultimately like all those connections and all that just hustle like got you here because yeah. you met the right people because you bet on yourself that's it and and it's kind of piggybacking off of what i was just saying i needed to get in front of people yeah so i said where are they right these fancy hotels these trendy restaurants these you know high-end places i'm thinking to myself okay let's 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 get there. Let's get in there. And, you know, I mean, at the time, I'm parking down the street because I don't want to valet. <laughs> I had just eaten at McDonald's because I know I'm not eating in the restaurant. I'm going to go in there. I'm going to order a seltzer or something. And I'm just going to work the room. And wow. I've told you guys some stories, right? Yeah. And I've had a lot of full circle moments now where now I'm staying at some of those hotels. And, again, I'm always so grateful because, you know, the journey is is, is big. And I, I really um, I really am just so grateful for every step of the way. Um but now looking back, you know, it's 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 a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, man, it was just always about getting in front of people and, and rubbing shoulders. And, and I, you know, I would go into these hotels and these restaurants and wait for someone to leave. Or I would go work the, the I'll go kind of spark a conversation with the doorman or the bouncer. And, you know, then I would go back to, to visit, let's just say, L.A. or back in the city. And I'd go to the places and, and then the doorman would let me in because he, he'd be like, all right, you know, right. these are good people, man. Come on in. Hang out for a little bit, you know. And just over and over again. I would just create these relationships, whether they were top of the food chain or even just work in that back door or, or, or valet, whatever it was. I just wanted to know everybody because you never know when someone is going to come around and be that helping hand or that connection to that next part, mm. that next, you know, that next step for you. And honestly, there's been some people that people that I met over the years that had nothing to offer me then. And not that I just wanted handouts or wanted, you know, what can you do for me? Right. No, I just want to build my network. I want to build a reputation. I want to build a brand in a sense. Right. Mm -hmm. But there were people I met five, six years ago that again, probably couldn't do much for me at that point in time, but fast forward, the phone was ringing. They thought of me for an opportunity. They thought of me for a gig and I'm thankful. And I know that sort of every person or every moment might not make sense right then and there, but down the road or that that moment's preparing you for something, you know, that's to come. And and, and I'm still doing that to this day. Mm -hmm. To this day. Right. Yeah. yeah. Another another rewind for you. I'm feeling uh I'm feeling uh I, I as much as I want to ask about Tyler Perry and divorce court yeah. and just like all the accomplishments, I also want to uh, take take a second to like really like get inside your brain and know you like yeah. what makes you tick because we always speak on a fun level, you yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. We're speaking yeah. about this guy's relationship or something. We're yeah. speaking about me or just something going down, but like I never really get to ask you these questions. So um, I, I guess the question that I have for you right now is. 
you're obviously a hyper performer and you have insane goals in life and you've done a lot of great things um, and you're around a lot of those people. Now, what is it that, what drives you, Mm -hmm. you know, and and, and that could be as general as, as, as you like, or as specific as you'd like anything that comes to mind about like, what is it that, 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 that really gets you going? Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things. Um, You know, what scares the shit out of me? 80, 90 year old Nick Barada sitting somewhere living with regret or looking in the mirror and saying, man, you didn't go hard enough. Man, you didn't lay it all out there back in the day. And just sitting there and just almost feeling bad for myself because I knew I was capable of doing so much more. So for that guy down the fucking road, mm-hmm. I'm I'm going hard because I never want to feel that, right? Mm-hmm. Now's a time when you want to just double down, sleepless nights, you know, go go crazy, yeah. you know? And that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm putting it all out there. Um, obviously now, you know, being a father and having a family, you know, I want to, I want to be able to provide and build a life for, for, for them. And, and, you know, um, there's many factors, but, um, you know, I've always had sort of this fire inside of me. Um, even from when I was, I feel like, you know, a kid, it's just like, I wanted to be great, you know? And, um, we're all capable, right? It's up to us. So it's like either lock in and be great or be okay with being mediocre and that might be fine for some people and live a normal life and do your thing. But that drives me because I don't want that. Yeah. And greatness might mean different things for different people. And speaking of Tyler Perry, I mean, my idea of success has changed for sure. Mm-hmm. It's not so much about the material things. And we've spoken about this. Mm-hmm. You know, I used to think it's the, you know, it's the, the, the car, or the, you know, the watch or the, whatever it is. Great. All those things are cool. But Tyler's shown me that success is about what you can do for others, helping people, guiding people. And I'm nowhere near the level that guy's on. Right. But if I can help somebody now in any way, could be just an introduction or you know any advice direction mm-hmm. i'm doing my part mm-hmm. and i want to continue to help people and help the community and get to a point where i can say wow i have an impact mm-hmm. that's the goal and that's success for me um so yeah it's just you know to go back to your question it's uh there's many factors but i think we all owe it to ourselves to really get up in the morning and go hard <laughs> and you know what like if you're okay with being an old man or an old lady and, and saying, man, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, then that's on you. But that's not, that's not my thing. So yeah. yeah. Do you if think that makes sense? No, 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 yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now I've heard you said this on our first episode that we did. Um, you talked about the microwavable society mm-hmm. and how, you know, if you want it to come out good, you can't put it in the microwave. Yeah. You got to put it in the oven. Yep. And, for you to be around all these people with, I guess, not being anyone yet, right? And trying to get your foot in the door. Was it ever hard for you to see how successful and, you know, these celebrities were and these people that you were trying to get in the same rooms with? Mm-hmm. Was it ever hard for you to play this long game? Like, was it always okay to be in the long game? You're like, yo, no matter how long this takes, like, I'm going to keep plugging away at this because I'm sure, like, I know for a lot of people, even for us, it's hard for us sometimes when we are around people and you internally know that like, yo, I'm just as as talented as you. I'm just as skilled as you. I'm just as smart as you. If not more. Yeah. If not more, I'm more capable and I just don't have the opportunity yet. So a lot of these people, when you get in these rooms, like we want, you want a microwave society. You want, you know, overnight success. You were around that. So how, how did you create that mentality of putting it in the oven and let it slow cook? Yeah. I mean, I think it's just kind of just having the right mindset, man. I mean, what's crazy now is some people get lucky with the TikToks and social media. And it is, for Which them. is crazy. It yeah. is for them it, overnight. It literally, yeah. You know? So listen, there are pros and cons to, to I guess, the society and the culture today where people are stars and, and blow up and 
overnight. You know, now I see people on the commercials and move in the movies and on TV that from TikTok, it's crazy. which is crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. And I'm not hating. I mean, that's an amazing, it's, it's, it's crazy that now there are different avenues, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. um, but I was always about the long game, I think. Um, and, and I still am, mm -hmm. but it's a mindset, man. It's a mindset. I mean, there's nights even now where I'll go out where I'm out and I get frustrated because I'm like, it's a reminder. You're like, damn, like, no, nah, like I'm, I'm, I got a lot of work to do. Like, look at this guy, look at this. Yeah. You don't want to compare yourself to anybody, but there's reminders where it's like, no, you got a, you got a long way to go. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I think it's just, it's just having the right mindset, like I said, but it's, it's, it's tough because the industry's changing. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know if there's like, I saw like Jennifer Aniston or somebody say recently, like, I, and I'm, I'm just talking about TV and film. So my industry, right? Mm -hmm. Like the idea of a star or the idea of a celebrity has changed because now, again, you can just have some crazy TikTok clout and mm -hmm. boom, you're there. So it's, 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 you got to adapt. And obviously, you know, even for me, who's been, I've been in this industry now like 10 years, it's changed many times already in that short time, really in, in the grand scheme of things. But it's just being, it's just having the mindset, man, and just, you know, staying in your own lane. You don't want to compare your journey to anybody else's. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, so you worry about you, you do you. And it's, it's listen, I'm not going to say it's, it's not discouraging. I mean, we've talked about this off camera as well. It's like, it's hard to keep mm -hmm. that, that mind right. Mm -hmm. But, um, but you got to work on it every day. And that's, that's, that's the main thing, you know, keep the focus right and, and keep your eyes on your own journey. Yeah. Yeah. What's been the best part about being an actor? Man. Cause I'm outside looking in like, yeah. that's cool shit. Yeah. It's fun, man. I, I've never felt like I'm at work ever. And that's like the biggest blessing. Like there hasn't been a day since I've started acting or, or, you know, when I was doing divorce court and just, you know, in the TV and film space where I've gotten up in the morning and I'm like, oh man, I'm like, all right, another day. I'm like so excited to get to set. Yeah. You know, it's like, you're literally like, it's like your kid at Disney world or something, you know, just going to, going for the going on the rides you know mm -hmm. it's it's crazy man um you know listen it's not all glitz and glam that's for sure mm -hmm. like even when we film the oval down at tyler perry studios it's crazy hours and especially the way he shoots it's just intense so you got to lock in and it's mm -hmm. it's not easy mm -hmm. but it's fun man i'm having the best time and and, and that's why it makes me want to like even work harder because i want to do this forever like i want to continue to build in this space and you know just have fun man growing you know have yeah. you know i'm listen i really am a kind of a rookie in the game yeah you know so i'm thinking to myself man if we can just if we can do this for the long game man how great is that have fun you meet so many great people you get to just tap into this creative space that like i feel like a lot of people don't even know they have yeah you, you know yeah. you know you know what's fucking crazy bro because i've i've like we obviously lately have been in a, in a little bit more of a period of like dem demoralization mm -hmm. um just because, uh, really, I think I think that I think that comes from a um, there. Th there's a there's a ton of reasons. I'm not gonna go into like our own personal reasons, but there's a ton there's there's a ton of reasons. But I and that's why I've been stu not studying, but I've been again. Fascination is another big word for me, and I've been fascinated with a lot of successful people. And mm -hmm. I I myself, bro, I love filmmaking. I love yeah. that entire industry, bro. And I when I first originally started in the game. Uh, the goal, you know, I, I did want to like win an Oscar, yeah. but now that I know kind of what it takes and, and, and to, to really win an Oscar, um, it's more on the back burner. I can't even fathom right, that right now because now that yeah. I actually know the work that goes into that, yeah. I can't even like wrap my wrap my head around that concept right now until maybe 10 years down the line when I am actually making films, then we could talk about that. Um, but there are uh, a lot of actors out there that um i feel like you 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 wouldn't think they're the best actor in the world mm -hmm. right but then 15 you know five years past 10 years past 15 20 25 years past and 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 they have their fucking one moment yeah. where they 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 win an oscar like yeah. a julia roberts yeah you know like she wins her 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 best actor uh, award for Aaron Brockovich. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Matthew McConaughey. A lot of people thought he's just a rom-com guy. Yeah. He he turns it around 
20 years later, yeah. 25 years later, and does uh, Dallas Buyers Club. Yeah. I think they hit a certain point in their career where they have to try something different, you know, try something new. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you can win an Oscar. That's that's the crazy thing. Right. Is, well, I, I want I yeah. want to ask you yeah. about like like yeah. like do you do you have an aspiration of doing something like that? Yeah, I mean, look again. I feel like I'm um, I'm sort of just starting out, and I'm still just a sponge in this game, and and I'm very lucky because I am surrounded by a lot of successful people, and mm -hmm. um you know people that have won Oscars, mm -hmm. right? I've held an Oscar before, fucking held an Oscar. Yeah. That was wild. I actually held an Oscar and an Emmy at the same time. Wow. Yeah. Talk about like, wow. Greatness. Like fucking a little tingly feeling in here. Yeah, yeah. That was there. That was there. Um, so, I mean, I'm, listen, I'm, I'm still in acting classes. I'm like, I'm even looking, I'm even looking at the oval and the five seasons I've been on the show. I'm cringing looking at season one, you know, <laughs> but I guess that means we're doing something right. If we're getting better and better and better, I know I have a long way to go, right. but, um, but, but we're all closer than we think to this, these things. Yeah. We're all closer than we think to these things, you know what I'm saying? So, um, so yeah, I mean, I, I, I want, I want to win an Oscar. I want to win, I want to win whatever I possibly can, yeah. you know, and get to the point where, where those are real conversations, but you know, I'm also realistic and I know what it takes. I mean, to your point, right. It's like, it's, um, you know, I feel like I have short-term goals and I have long-term goals. Mm -hmm. but the beautiful thing about being in this industry and, and, and doing these things is like, man, I can be, I can be 55 years old and like, you know, turn around and be a part of some crazy project and have my moment then. You're just that's better, gonna feel, yeah. And you're just better gray with gray hair. Hey, maybe that's what, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Star, if you were starting to poke through, man, right. it might be sooner than we think. No. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, I, I'm, I'm, I'm always a sponge and I'm, I'm truly like just absorbing any piece any piece of advice or watching people operate i'm taking it all in man and and just really um keeping that fire burning inside of me you know yeah um and and again at the at the end of the day i'm, I'm just having fun and that's the beautiful thing so it's like i'm not putting pressure on myself mm -hmm. so there's no pressure there but man i would love to get to the point i mean the oscars were just on i'm like i gotta get there man i gotta yeah. get there gotta yeah. get there um but you know what? I also am watching the Oscars, and I'm like, I know some of these people. Yeah. And that's cool too. Right. You know. So, you know, I'm just just keep going, man. I'm just gonna keep going, and and you know, listen, I know what the odds are of getting an Oscar, but like, you gotta dream big, man. There's no. I was just saying this, and Tyler Perry is is so big on this too. Like, no dream is too big. You know, being at his studio and working at Tyler Perry Studios, you're literally like surrounded just by this inspiration constantly we my dressing room is in the dream building you know he has his car that he slept in like a replica of his car that he slept in when he was you know broke like trying to get do his thing in theater it's on the lot you know you pull up to there it's it's where even dreams believe that's where like i'm going to work so like you know i'm like just absorbing it all and just trying to do my best and it's not a bad place to work and and, and be inspired and and those things are they're 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 out there for the taking man you know yeah. so i don't know i mean we're just gonna keep pushing yeah 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 and obviously like up until this point like the way you've explained what it took to get here you've you've done the work on the back end to be you know they say what like you know people aren't lucky it's when like preparation meets timing yeah, yeah. you know and obviously you've done that so i want you at least for our audience now also like talk about the night you met Tyler Perry or how you got in touch with Tyler yeah. Perry to now be, you know, on the oval yeah. and, you know, yeah. going, working at Tyler Perry studios. Yeah. I mean, my, my whole life changed when I shook that man's hand. Um, but there were so many hands that I had to shake to get to that point. So 10 years, man, of, listen, I was working odd jobs. I was, uh, like like I said, going to places I had no business being at, just trying to connect dots. Um, and it was it was there were a lot of ups and downs, a roller coaster of an industry. Um, but I always I never had a plan B. I feel like I always knew I was gonna work in this industry and be on TV and be an actor and 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 do it. And and even to say it now is is you know. It's crazy. I get goosebumps because it's like, it's happening. You know, it's happening. 
But um, Tyler Perry was an instrumental and still to this day piece of the, of, of the, the, pic, the bigger picture for me. And, you know, when I met him, he, he kind of wanted to know what my dreams and aspirations were and where I wanted to take this thing. Because at the time I was, I was on divorce court and that was more on scripted TV and like, you know, not that I didn't take that seriously, but I knew that was just kind of a stepping stone. And, um, you know, we did, we shot that at Tyler Perry studios and I knew I'm like, we're at Tyler. I'm, I'm Phil, I'm supposed to be here because I know there's a bigger play. And I met Tyler on the lot and we ended up reconnecting a couple months after that initial conversation. But man, he wanted to know about my dreams and aspirations. If I wanted to get more into scripted television, cause I told him that was the goal and he gave me a shot. He gave me a shot and literally like changed my entire life. And, um, I remind him every chance I get, I'm like, like, you know how grateful I am for you. Right. You know, it's it's crazy, and that's what he that's who he is. That's what he does. He literally, I say, he sh his light shines so bright that he lets lets other people find their way. He helps people find their way, um, and it's what he did for me. And you know, I'm I'm gonna literally spend the rest of my life thanking that guy because he, um, you know, he uh, he changed it all for me, man. He changed it all, and that guy is like he's a machine. The guy's a powerhouse. You know, he created his own Hollywood. He paved his own lane he's a pioneer like so i just being able to be around him as much as i am it's such a blessing you know he's 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 arguably i mean in my opinion he's the best hardest working man in hollywood you know so to be able to work and be working for that guy and for him to be a mentor to me now is it's it's incredible incredible yeah. so yeah I have a question. It's a little bit of a viral topic, yeah. but it's also personal. So am I making I sense, know. by the way? Or am I like, I don't no, know. No, no, yeah, 100%. of course. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Oh, whatever. No, my bad. I feel like we're bouncing all over. No, the no, place it's good. I just feel like I'm like, am I like bringing it home? Am I bringing it home? <laughs> no, 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 no. Of course. Of <laughs> course, bro. Uh, no, my, my, my question is more. Uh, I don't even know if you're allowed to answer this, but I just think it, you tell me first if, if you even think this is a good question. How much money actors make? I mean, it's it depends. Yeah. Yeah. It depends. Um, there are working actors that I know that still have real nine to five jobs and just you know submit auditions and if they get something they take out they take off of work and they go do their thing and. You know, and then there's other actors that obviously are able to do it full time, mm -hmm. and um, that's hard to do. Um, but there's there's uh there's like there's levels to it, like right. anything else. You yeah. know, obviously the Bradley Coopers and Brad Pitts and Margot Robbie's have, you know, a there's a number that comes with hiring that level of talent. Right. Um, and then there's obviously many levels under there that depends on the project. It depends mm -hmm. on, you know, you can book a commercial, right? And you can get paid X amount for the day, but then you can get paid on the back end from all the usage throughout right. the next couple of years. Right. So it depends. It's all, it's all, it all depends on sort of um, what kind of project you're working on. If you have that status kind of already in the industry where mm -hmm. people know that you have a price tag on you. Right. Um, so there's no real answer to that. Yeah. Um, I mean, but it's it's I, I don't know the, the 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 number of people that are making a true living off of being an actor is isn't high you know um it's it's a cutthroat industry it's crazy competitive um and uh it's it's uh discouraging and listen if i had a dollar for every no i've gotten after an audition, I'd be already retired somewhere on, on an island. Yeah. I mean, you know, so yeah, it's hard to answer that question. There's no, there's no right. true answer, but there's levels to it, like anything else. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So on this, on this path, you said it was about ten years. How important was it having a good woman by your side? Oh man, yeah. Well, we could talk about this for for, for a long time. I mean, right. we, especially with you two, because we we we've, we've had. Our, uh, <laughs> We've had our, our, our fair share of uh, storytelling. Um, I think it's everything, man. I really do. Um, you know, you find the right woman that only pushes you to be the best version of yourself. Somebody who uh, will kick you in the ass if you're slacking or, or you know, you, you get down on yourself. They're there to remind you that, uh, you know, you're better than that and get back out there. I mean, I truly believe, like, 
any successful person needs that partner behind them and that foundation strong. Um, I have a lot of single friends that, that, you know, listen, I'm not, sometimes I'm like, oh man, this guy's out having the time of his life, man. Good for, good for that guy. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know if I could, I could be doing the whole runaround right now. I'm focused. And I think, um, again, having that foundation strong and, and a good solid partner is everything is everything, you know? Yeah. It's wild, bro. Because like I look at you and, uh, I find you similar to me in a sense of just like super charismatic, super outgoing. And I, to me, it just doesn't go like hand in hand yeah. with, with you having a wife and a kid. Yeah, just... I mean, look, <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy. I think if I was a single guy right now running around, I don't think I'd be remotely uh, in the position I, I am today or, or has, have found any sort of, um, I mean, listen, I, I would hope I was doing something with my life, but right. I feel like I would be just, partying lost distracted doing in, yeah. the, in the fast lane and i've seen yeah. a lot of guys you know end up down there and and they lose sight of their goals and and where they're trying to go i mean look it comes with discipline and obviously some sort of um you know self-control mm -hmm. uh i'm gonna tell you guys if you were asking me man go have fun and go do your thing like you guys are young i mean Listen, I've been out of the game a long time, so it is crazy to think about. But I do think a solid partner and, like I said, a, a strong foundation really catapults you into into uh, uh, a new level of, of um, whatever you're after. Yeah. I mean, bro, what you said to me that made a lot of sense to me was where I started to think about it, bro, because you fucked me up, bro. You fucked my whole head up, bro. <laughs> Cause, yeah, because I was, I was, I, I've always just thought about it differently. I always thought you could be way more successful on your own yeah. because, you know, you have another person there that's, you know, 50% of, of more of energy that you have to pour into. It's a whole other life. And then now you have a kid that's more yeah. energy. Yeah. But then you were, you told me, which like was like a boom for me. You were like, yo, that same 50% you had, you were just going to be horny chasing bitches. <laughs> right, right, you know? right. Yeah, imagine you actually taking that energy and putting it in a, you know. Like an investment. Right. You know, um, I mean, you talk about a kid. I mean, think about what that does for your, your that motivation and, 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 you know, that fire inside of you. It's, listen, it's it's all relative, but, but I truly believe, um, you know, again, like channeling that energy. I mean, I don't know. For me, if I was sitting alone, I'd be I'd be all up in these thoughts, man. I, I, I it's nice to turn to somebody that and say, okay, can you just tell me I'm doing okay here, or can you just remind me what's up? Because like I, you know, dude, I'm fucking crazy. I'm nuts, you know. So I needed somebody. We know. To, yeah, I needed somebody <laughs> to like, yo, bring it home here, bring it home, you know. And I've known my wife since I was in first grade. I mean, we've been friends before anything. So it's it's all that also plays a role. I mean, you have your best friend. That goes a long way. I mean, you know, I'm not, I'm not telling you guys just to dive into a relationship because some girl on your side is gonna help you get to where you're trying to go. No, right. you gotta like find somebody that understands you, right. right? You know, and when things aren't great or you guys are down bad one day, she's still by your side and gonna add some muscle behind you to get back on the horse. I mean. My my wife, I was in a 1999 Blazer that if I turned too sharp, the door swung open. I would tie it. I would take a belt and tie it around the handle to like and to hold it if I had somebody in the car because I didn't want it to swing open and, and be embarrassed. So I'm turning the car. I'm like, <laughs> shit was really trying to swing open, man. That's not that wasn't easy. That wasn't easy. This but, is hilarious. But she was in there with me, man. I always tell the story. So it's it's great to have somebody who was with you in the dark times. And I'm not saying I was like on the street or anything, but you know what I mean? Like in, in the times that were tough, you know, I was a server for 10 years and I was, you know, just trying to get by while I had these bigger dreams. And she was always pu pushing me and supporting me, you know, as my family was, as my parents were, um, as my friends were. I have the same group of friends that I've had since I was literally in elementary school. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just, you, we were just talking about it on, on my podcast. You guys saw, uh, you know, you want a big network and a tight circle. And I truly believe that. So between my wife and my parents and my friends, I mean, it's all the same thing. Just people that support you, people that are by your side, people that motivate you, people that you want you to do better. I mean, I've also had friends, though, that I've had to separate, separate myself from a little bit because they weren't adding 
any value to my life or helping me be better. You want a team that has similar goals and that want to build together, you know, um, no love lost, but it's like, no, I got a mission. I'm on a mission here. So if we're not on the same mission, then I'll catch you, catch you later type of thing. You know what I mean? But I want for you to honestly, as we get to know each other a little bit, like to honestly find when that time is right again, have your fun, man. Do your thing. I mean, you guys are, are are outside having a blast. I know it. Don't rush or force anything. But what I hope for you, too, is you guys honestly find... I'll let you sneeze. <laughs> I was like... I, I saw it. Like, like, I saw it. I saw it coming. I saw it coming. No, but my what I hope for you guys is you literally find a girl that... What I'm saying instantly makes sense. Yeah. And beyond, yeah. And you'll be like, all right, yeah. No, this is this is this is it, and we're we're going we're going we're going places. You know? Yeah, that's really the. I mean, the determining factor is actually having the right one that believes in you more than you believe in yourself. Because especially when we are in this, obviously we're in different industries, right? Like we're trying to make it in content and podcasting, right? You're an actor, and now you're doing the podcast mm -hmm. thing. But they all kind of have this same stigma where it is very easily it's very easy to get demoralized and to get down on yourself and to start overthinking especially when you're by yourself at night and things like yeah. that that's and, my point like you don't lay down at night sometimes and you're you're just like oh i need to get up and go for a walk here because because i'm i'm deep in it because i know you guys are creative people i know what you guys want i know yeah. the mission you guys are on yeah. it's hard sometimes man. Yeah. yeah it's freaking tough to sit back and hear those thoughts go off late at night man i know it is no, it's, it's, it's every night. And that's right. what I'm saying where like if you have that, if you have a woman that like can shut that off sometime or bring yeah. you peace, yeah. you know, and, and be there where you know like, all right, like I'm not here for myself right now, but like at least she's here for me. Like yeah. I guess that's when you know because yeah. the worst is when you're not happy with yourself, you're going through it, you're in your thoughts and then you have a girl and then yeah. she just adds more to that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. That's like, that's <laughs> not what we want. No. No, that's not what we want. Yeah. But listen, I truly think that you need to also experience that as well mm. to a certain extent, mm -hmm. right? Because I, I truly think like any experience that you go through is only preparing you for kind of what's to come. Mm -hmm. And it might not make sense in that moment, but mm -hmm. down the road, you'll be like, that's exactly why I went through that. That's yeah. exactly why I was with that that girl for for that at that point in my life. That's exactly why, you know, me and me and that homie of mine had that thing for a second and we we had a we had to take some time. Whatever it may be, down the road, I feel like everything kind of clicks and, yeah. and, and makes sense. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I'm a big believer in, in, in that foundation, man. And, and, and for me, it's always been family first. And I think it's, um, it's everything goes back to being that, that main motivation factor, right? right? It's everything, man. It's everything. So obviously over this last year, your motivation has probably changed a little bit. You're now a father. Yep. So what is that like? Like how much, cause I mean, we've spoke, I've known you for years now. You're like one of the boys, like one yeah. of the guys, you know what I'm saying? Like, we're all like, kind of like the same, like the way we talk, like right now, like me and him cannot even fathom having a fucking kid, yeah. you know? Yeah. And like, I couldn't even imagine it. And like, I have a bunch of friends with kids that are my age, you yeah. know? And obviously we're a little younger, but I mean, bro, like we all kind of hang out with the same yeah. crowd, whatever. Yeah. Like, what is that like yeah. being a father? Hey, Amen. What's the name of this podcast? The Journey. The Journey. Hey, everybody's on their own, you know. Um, I mean, if you asked me a few years ago, I'd be like, "What?" If yeah. you were telling, you know, listen, sometimes life just takes its course, and it's a, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. I mean, me having my daughter is the best thing that ever happened to me. Um, I've, I'm, I'm like a whole new person, you know. Um, the best me I've ever been. Uh, I could, you know, listen, I'm an anxiety ridden dude. Like talk about those, those voices, talk about that, that hustle. It's, it's hard, you know, man, she brings it all home. And, um, you know, when you're holding her and when I, it's all out the window, all that, all that BS, man. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's incredible, man. It really is. Um, I'm more grounded than ever. I'm more, uh, 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 and it's not about me, you know, I'm just saying like what she's done to me is just it's a love like you've never known. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. And I st even being called dad or like somebody saying, how's, how's being a dad? I'm like, what? 
I'm a right. dad. Yeah. It is crazy. But, you know, it's kind of the time of, of life right now. And a lot of my friends, you know, it's cool, too, because a lot of my friends were all having kids together. So it's uh, it's awesome. Man. I can't wait. I mean, she's seven months now. Mm-hmm. She's like my little bestie. Um, you know, uh, I can't wait to, like, just enjoy every chapter with her. And, and, you know, I took her to the city with me the other day. And nice. like, we were, like, in Central Park. I took her for lunch. We're walking around. I'm like, this is the best thing ever, man. Yeah. It's the best thing ever. There's, like, a, also a, there's like a peace that comes with it, too. Mm-hmm. You know, I've been in this fast lane, you can say, for a long time. And I, know, and I still have to be out and go to these events and run around and do my thing. And that's always going to be a part of kind of what I'm doing. Because mm-hmm. it is about networking. It is about getting in front of people. I mm-hmm. mean, it's always going to be part of it, no matter where you are. Uh, you know, um, in your journey, yeah. but uh, man, you know, uh, she's sh- holding her and, and like just being on the couch and hanging out. It's that's the best place, man. You think a Bugatti yeah. can make you happier? No, I honestly don't. I honestly don't. So then, there you go. You won. That's I, I, it. I, I mean, yo, isn't that a crazy thing to say? Like, like a Bugatti's like five million dollars, yeah, and yeah. right there, you could have no money. But I mean, have that's a kid like, and- but that's like saying like like. Would I trade my kid for five million dollars? Absolutely not. Right. Um, I mean, I saw, I saw some clip recently, like some guy, a man on the street interview. Uh, they said, like, would you would you die for? Would you? Uh, damn, I'm gonna butcher this thing. <laughs> I hate that, bro. Yeah, when you you know don't what? really have even, it. Let me not even go there. I, yeah, I, yeah. I gotta send it to you guys. But my, <laughs> but the point of it was like, like the true meaning of life and 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 the joy that comes with the simple things isn't it, it, it's it's not negotiable yeah. there's no there's nothing you can there's nothing to replace that yeah. you know yeah. so i mean look a bugatti would be nice yeah for sure right but no life uh it's the simple things man it's yeah I ha- I had like a- watch like my daughter laughing now like is like literally the best sound I've ever heard and the best feeling I've ever had just holding her and her giggling while I tickle her a little bit and her just putting her little hand on my face. I mean, it's, it's insane. I, I, another thing I hope for you guys. Okay. Whenever it may be is to experience that as well. Having a child and, and you know, no rush again, but, but man, it's a feeling like no other. Do you want more kids? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I have three brothers, you know, I yeah. grew up with, with a big yeah. family. I mean, uh, I hope that I can kind of have that, you know, same, uh, sort of family dynamic and 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 have a a big family but uh no rush i mean look we're enjoying this chapter uh and we'll get you know we'll get to number two eventually but um yeah man i mean it's a beautiful time for me right now uh life's good you know working hard career is in the right place Mm um you know having a daughter has just been the biggest blessing and we're just building on it we're just building on it so yeah. yeah. You said you're an anxiety ridden guy. Yeah. You're on basically a mental health podcast. Yeah. So I have to ask you about that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, I should, you guys got some advice for, for, or what? Like, <laughs> well, cause, cause, well, man, I've gotten better. Listen, since, since my daughter came along, a lot of that's out the window. But, but, oh man, I mean, don't we all have a little bit of anxiety? I of feel course. Like, yeah, yeah. That's just part of life too. Of course. Yeah. But anxiety from like my experience, uh, like, cause I've, I also have anxiety as well. And then there's like generalized anxiety. That's just, it just is what it is. You just, you know, naturally have anxiety. It's just a feeling. But then I've also, um, over time have learned that, uh, Anxiety can also have like a, a source, you know, mm-hmm. there's something that's causing the anxiety. Do you know what's causing your anxiety? No, I don't. I think I don't think I've ever been able to put my finger on it. Yeah. I think it's just kind of a part of, of the makeup for me, man. And, um, you know, it's something I've had to like kind of learn and navigate on my own. And again, like having my daughter now and being this part of my life has definitely helped. But, you know, um, I feel like everybody's just just kind of got a little bit of it and it's that's why i always say you got to just be kind to people man you don't know what people are battling you don't know what what like demons people are fighting or you know what people are going through you know so i always like you know i know people have it much worse than i do and i'm not saying i wake up every day and like you know with that but you know i like to just spread love and positivity man and and just always put good out there because people man people people are really uh you know, going through some shit, you know? So I want to be a light, not, not anything else for yeah. people, you know? No. And, and you've always been that guy. Cause I, I remember, I remember the first message 
you know, ever between us is when I went out to Southampton to play basketball. And I remember, I mean, when I was in like seventh and eighth grade, I was coming to your high school playoff games Mm. to watch you guys. And I remember you sent me a message. I think when I ended up transferring to Southampton and you wrote me like a, you know, a long message just saying like, yo, I see a lot of myself in you with just the basketball and the grind and the hustle, like keep going, like, you know, like you're going to do great things. And, you know, we didn't even know each other. We never spoke, you know what I'm saying? But like, you just went out of your way. You know, you could have kept that to yourself. You could, you know, there's a lot of kids that I see like myself and them. And I don't, you know, I could do a better job of like doing that because you don't know what that does to them. Like for me, like, bro, like you were like a celebrity, you know what I'm saying? From Whitman, went to the same high school, bro. You're on TV, shit like that. So it was very cool. And then, you know, and then when I start the podcast, I asked you, I'm I'm working at Shrimpies. I'm like, you you were like my first like big guest, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I was like, you know, would you want to come on the pod? You're like, yeah, let's do it. So you've always been that guy. Yeah. And people don't understand how much and how far kindness and just being a good person can get you. We speak about just being a good person. Yeah. At the end of the day, like you just want people to remember you, whether they like what you do, they don't like what you do, they support what you do, they don't. But like if you become face to face with someone and they can just be like, all right, whatever it was, like he was a good person. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. She was a good person. And, 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 being kind uh, is is an easy thing to be you know um I, I see the fact that you remember that and that resonated with you you know that means i did my part it was nine I, years ago it's crazy right i've had people that have done the same for me and i know how i felt when someone sent me a message or have, have went out of their way to 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 make a point and um certain experiences and moments have stuck with me and and that's the stuff you want to pass along and it's crazy that was nine years ago but I feel like I've had those same sort of beliefs then that I do now is like help others, right? Be be a light. Tyler Perry has completely taken those beliefs and ideas to a whole new level. Like again, that to me is the idea of success when you can have an impact on somebody. And I'm not saying nine years ago I was like, you know, who am I really? But like, man, even just reaching out and sending that message I didn't know what it was going to do, but like, I know that I went to bed that night saying, you know what, maybe that'll, maybe that'll, you know, maybe that'll sit with him and, and, and make that, make him feel good. No, for real. Because like you say, you never know what people are going through. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you do just need a message from a stranger that, you know, like, yo, someone does believe in me. You know, someone does see all the work I'm putting in behind the scenes because it doesn't seem like it's happening right now. Like that's the hardest thing is like when you are on this, this path to greatness and you you have to sacrifice a lot, you have to lose a lot of friends, you have to fucking spend a lot of alone time. It is so easy to get down on yourself. So if you can have that, that one person that you might've looked up to and they, they recognize what you're doing yeah. that might be that little bit of motivation to get you over the hump or to yeah. keep you going yeah. because there's a lot of people that are talented we talk about it all the time there there's people that are so talented and they can they can bring greatness to this world yeah. but they doubt themselves and then yeah. they don't have any support and it's so easy for them to quit because they're like I don't really believe in myself. No one else fucking believes in me. Why why am I even doing this? Yeah. And it's and it's very easy to just fucking hang them up and just go do something that nobody gives a fuck about yeah. because I, I think I've had really like only gr- great experiences with a lot of these celebrities and people I've met in this industry like that have really only passed along good advice mm-hmm. good energy and it's and I take a lot of that with me and want to pass it on right so for me um if that's something I hope and want to continue to do forever right that's the biggest reward I feel like is you know, putting good out there. So if I can, I will continue to do that. I mean, that's, that's the best feeling ever to just help people. And again, be a light. Um, but yeah, I love when you tell that story, man. Cause I, I remember that too. I was, I mean, nine years ago, it was a while back. And I remember like, I think I was just, I listen, basketball was a big part of my life. I think I just saw like that grind in you. And, and, you know, I saw that, I think you're going, were you going into your senior year? Yes, I, yeah. when I transferred to Southampton yeah. from Whitman, I left uh, Whitman. So I think I just saw that end near for you in a way, that chapter closing, and yeah. then what, where are you going to go from there? And I know you went on to continue to play and stuff, but my point is like, man, just enjoy it, right? And and put it all out there. And and I'm glad, you know, listen, I'm glad that it sat with you, bro, for yeah. real. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm like, I take pride in that, you know, whether it's somebody working at, at, at the, you know the, the barista that I, I'm grabbing coffee from, or yeah. I, I or whatever. I just always want to kind of leave an impact on, on somebody if I can. You know. Yeah. 
Why do you think some people don't do that? Like some, because there's a lot of successful people that yeah. like if you're not wearing a certain watch, they won't even look at yeah. you. You know? Yeah, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. Like I said, I think a lot of my experiences, most of them have been great, because mm-hmm. um, I'm always out there looking for advice too. You know? Yeah. Um, but it's a shame, right? Because it's like, you know, you look up to a lot of these people and you want that helping hand or you want you know somebody to help you know guide you and mm-hmm. and, and the people that don't i'll never understand it yeah. I, never, I never will i never will i remember uh michael strahan i remember like dm i used to just dm people like yeah but i remember him just hit me back like i think i still have it man just keep going don't stop till you get there like kept going i was like damn and, wow and i'm like you know you know what, what that did for me you know when so it's 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 cool it's uh but it's it's contagious also, right? So spread love, spread that positivity. Like I said, be a light. And I think, you know, I think good things come back twice over, right? Like the, the blessings come and they continue to come the more you put the good out there and, and, and have that mindset. I really do. Yeah, law you of know. karma. Yeah. Um, I know you got to get out of here. I know it's your brother's birthday dinner tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, got a few minutes, all good. Yeah, I, I want you to, I wanted to ask you like, what has been, what was the moment, like the coolest moment for you in this industry? Like, was it meeting uh, an idol? Was it, was it a, a night? Was it a dinner? Was it an event? What was the, like, what was one moment that stood out to you that was like, I cannot believe I'm here right now? Yeah. I mean, uh, listen, I've had an opportunity to sit down and meet so many people I've looked up to over the years. It's crazy from like, uh, John Stamos who like, from Full House, so I, I wanted to be Uncle Jesse. You know, I actually met John Stamos and Bob Saget, rest in peace, together. And my like that like ten year old inside of me again was going crazy. Like Full House, that was my jam. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, Will Smith. I, I had the opportunity of meeting a lot of people, and um, you know, again, all these moments were cool. I'd say I was invited to the opening of Tyler Perry Studios, and. That, like, it's hard to even put into words. I mean, um, everybody was there from Denzel and Halle Berry to uh, Will Smith and, you know, uh, 2 Chains. I mean, you name it, they were there. Uh, But it was just an inspiring, special moment for me for a few reasons. One, uh, again, being around, being surrounded by greatness, really, right? And all these amazing people, directors and actors. But also it was a moment for me because I remember saying to myself, you, you got invited. Nick Barada got invited here. You know, Nick, Nick Barada was on the list for this moment and for this celebration. And that was crazy. And, you know, it's hard to put in the words kind of the, the, um, the way that night went. I mean, you, the doors opened to uh, Tyler Perry Studios like, and and I remember Jennifer Hudson with like a choir was singing and like we just it felt like we were like floating into like the heavens. It, it was an emotional night, you know. It was an emotional night and it was great and it was definitely the most inspiring moment for me. But again, one of the one of the best for sure. Yeah. And I, I that's that was a night I actually met Will Smith and I remember going up to him. I think there's a video on my Instagram. There's there's a uh, a moment I went up to him and I told him like, listen, I I had your posters on my my wall as a kid. I mean, you know, you've done some amazing things and, and I just you know want you to know how um, how much you've inspired me over the years you know this was pre-slap by the way I didn't like that yeah. but, but uh, no that was a moment for sure but there's been a ton there's been a ton it's hard to narrow it down but that was definitely one again being at Tyler Perry Studios Tyler Perry obviously playing such a huge role in my, my career and, and success having it all kind of there at that moment was just surreal wow. yeah yeah man that was crazy actually I have a book they sent a huge book I'll show you guys of like all highlights from the night. It's uh, it's special. It's special. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, definitely. Uh, yeah. Nikki B. Man, Nikki this is cool, B. man. This is you know. Listen, episode eight. What is, what is it again? One thirteen. All right. So we'll have to run it back in another hundred or so. <laughs> well, well, that's what I'm saying. Like 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 like. I, I almost fucking I wish we had more time and, and then we were all just getting fucking sloshed you know <laughs> and then starts telling some real stories yeah no but like, you can bro even, bro we'll just do like an internal with them. right like yeah, us three yeah, and John I, or something yeah, like yeah, that bro no, like sure. whatever you want to come on I mean, look bro, while, just, yeah. while, while we're still rolling man you guys know I've told you many times um, you guys have been crazy consistent 
it's a lot of people would have given up mm. and just been like, all right, like that was fun. Yeah. I mean, you guys, you've seen, you, you've worked with brands, you've seen numbers, right? I mean, you've had moments, but um, you'll continue to break new barriers, man. But but it's just about keeping that consistency. I truly believe that. Yeah. Um, I, I and it's that's the same in any industry. I mean, even for me, on, on as an actor, like I've worked with so many talented people that just couldn't, you know, withstand the storm. Uh, they couldn't get through it. You know what I mean? Um, so. You know, I know we spoke a lot about just keeping the mind right, but but man, you guys are doing great things, and I feel like um, it's only going to get better and better. And I can't wait to see kind of where you guys are in another hundred and two hundred and three hundred. You keep this thing going, and you know I'm rooting for you guys. So let's you know. go. Yeah, Appreciate man. that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it's cool. It's cool that we like work. We work together now. Yeah, too. you know yeah. what I'm saying. Like, this I mean, is you cool. guys listen. You guys made me want to get back into this a bit yeah. and like really start it up because I'm seeing what you guys are doing. I'm seeing the quality and and what you guys are putting out there, and it's fucking great. And I'm like, listen, I gotta um, I gotta get this thing going. You guys inspired me, so yeah. you know, it's uh, it's all love, and um, yeah, man, just keep pushing. And like I said, I'm in your corner. So only good things, big things ahead. Uh, and we'll keep rocking, man. Let's Appreciate go. that. Yeah, yeah. Go check out Nick's podcast, the Here's the Life podcast, YouTube, Spotify, Apple, TikTok, the whole works. Um, good platform, bringing on really cool guests. Um, different guests than, than the typical podcast that you're seeing like in the celebrity industry. A lot of cool stories. So, yeah, go check out his podcast. Subscribe, like, comment there. Um, episode 113. Cool. Done. See you for episode two thirteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nick's gonna have a beard. Uh, He's maybe, gonna be a, a caveman have, yo, in a movie have, or something. Yo, maybe like I'll that. be full gray by then, <laughs> yeah. all right? And I'll come back. What? What? Does Oscar Oscar come then? I don't know. We'll see. Gandalf's yeah, son. Yeah, right. <laughs> It's yeah. only, I mean, 100 episodes, it's 100 we'll be weeks. There in like it's only fucking, two years. We'll be, it is crazy, you're going to be 36. Yeah, it's it crazy. <laughs> we might be there soon. Yo, listen, <laughs> hey. Shit. We're doing yo. like 15 pods in Miami, bro. We're going to get yeah, there fucking yeah, soon. Yeah, that'll be, the pace you guys are on, it'll be yeah. two, two weeks. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. All right, man. Appreciate All right, you guys. Bro. Good Much stuff. Love. Much yep. love. Always.